over and over and over again. This is the story. They're extracting money out of you. Yeah. What about the gas tax, right? Yeah. Just a few months ago, I'm sitting there on the legislative floor. I'll tell you about my story in a moment, but I'm sitting on the legislative floor, and just suffice it to say for the moment that I have a 100% vote record on everything you care about. I got first elected in 2012 on a simple promise. I will not raise taxes on California because I think they're already high enough, right? Funny thing is, is guess what? Jerry Brown got elected on a very similar promise. His promise in 2010 was no new taxes without voter approval. Raise your hand if you got a chance to vote on Jerry Brown's massive, large in California's history gas tax increase. Not a one of you. I did. I'm a California lawmaker. I got elected, so I got a chance to vote. And what happened? I got steamrolled by the Democrats up in Sacramento. I have the largest social media presence of any Republican in California, about 300 and some thousand followers on Facebook, reaching a million to three million people a week. I get more earned media, more TV, more radio, more, more newspaper than almost any other Republican in California, most weeks. Sometimes Kevin McCarthy has me beat. I made speeches. My video has been seen by millions of people. I made speeches on the floor. I have hit that red button on my desk on the assembly floor so many times that just a couple of months ago, I broke the button. I hit it and it went flying. I mean, literally, it's on tape. You can see this, right? Yeah, I'll, I'll take those screens for that one. But you know what? All my efforts and all of Jerry Brown's campaign promises were for nothing because Jerry Brown took a billion dollars of your money a billion dollars of taxpayer funds and used it to bribe four legislators a billion dollars to ram through the largest gas tax increase in California's history. Your gas will now cost 12 cents more per gallon in November, 20 cents more for diesel, plus a 4% increase in sales tax diesel. And starting at January 1st, all of your car registrations go up by, at the lowest, $25, but up to $175 per year, generating $54 billion in revenue, your money, when you hear revenue, just think that's coming right out of your pocket for Sacramento over the next 10 years. Have we had enough in California? Yes. Have we had enough in California? Yes. Yes. Isn't it time we do something about yes. it, right? Listen, how is it possible if we have more oil and gas in Saudi Arabia, that we have gas that is the second highest in the nation? The only state that beats us for gas prices right now, does anybody know what it is? Pennsylvania. No, it's Hawaii, and they got to ship the gas there. Think about this. We are sitting on oceans of oil and gas, yet we pay people billions and tens of billions of dollars to bring in foreign oil when we have our own. Not only should we be energy sufficient, self-sufficient, we should be an energy exporter. Because remember, the feds just changed the law, so we are now allowed to export our oil and gas. California should do this. We should use cleanly, safely, environmentally friendly. Yeah. This is your money. This is our energy, and we should go take advantage of it. Do you agree? Yes. yes. Double hole. <laughs> do you agree? Yes. This is tens of trillions of dollars. Think about this, guys. California's got this massive pension debt problem, right? We have these unfunded pension liabilities. You got two fine individuals back there. I'm going to point them out. One is Mike Johnson. Let's hear it from Mike Johnson on my campaign side. And then you got George Andrew. He's on um, uh, Tom Lackey's campaign staff. Yeah. Last I checked, this is Saturday at about 1 o'clock. And uh, these are not work hours, right? That's why they're campaign staff right now. But, but during the week, when they're working their normal jobs, they, they also work for state operations. They're both state workers back there, right? Mm -hmm. Nothing wrong with that. We need good people to do good work, right? But get this. When state workers have worked for 10 years in the state of California, they get half, half of their medical expenses paid for life. Oh my you work 20 years in the state of California, you get lifetime medical covered for the rest of your life. Raise your hand, anybody, if any employer ever paid you lifetime medical, right? This is your money, guys. This is what you're spending it on. The average public sector worker in California, not these guys, they're underpaid because all the Democrats are taking all their money, but the average <laughs> public sector worker in California makes over 50% more than the average private sector worker. Think about this. Raise your hand if you work in the private sector, right? Government workers, on average, are making more than half, more than 50% more of what you're making, 150% of whatever you're making, that's what they're making on average. Wow. This is a crime. How does yes, this happen? 
This happens because it ain't their money they're giving away, it's your money. And they don't give a damn about your money. They approve this over and over and over again. Not only with the most recent cap and trade tax, not only with the most recent gas tax, but with almost every single tax. California is among the highest taxes in the nation. And I will tell you right now, it's about time that we stop the tax, tax increases, yes. but much more important than that, it's about time that we actually cut taxes in California. Yeah. Do you agree? Yeah. 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 I got elected in 2012. I'm an investment advisor. What, what I really am, guys, I'm a Southern California surfer. Okay? <laughs> I, yeah, that's right. I grew up five minutes from the border in, in San Diego, a little town called Chula Vista. Okay? Gorgeous little place. When I was six years old, um, father's attorney, mom decided she'd help out at school. So she joined the PTA, and she became the PTA president. Saw some things she didn't like, so she joined the school board and became the school board president, right? Okay. So when I was six years old, I was putting signs in people's front yard saying, go vote for my mom, <laughs> right? But that was kind of the end of my political life, and that was the end of her elect life. After that, she went on to the California Coastal Commission, California Coastal Conservancy, which she cha chaired for 12 years. And when she finally got fired by Gray Davis, because of course she was hired by Wilson and Duke Mage and fired by the Democrat, they actually said, don't, you know, you can fire the other Republicans, but keep Penny Allen, because you know, she actually makes sense, right? So she was never an extreme person, but that was my experience. Other than that, I'd never seen anything about politics. I left San Diego, I went up to LA, I went to school in LA, I flew out and, and lived in Hawaii for a time. I was gonna stay in Hawaii and just surf there and go to University of Hawaii, but I got tired of being called a Howley. Does anybody know what Howley means? Yeah. It means? It means outsider, but what it really means is white boy that doesn't belong here, right? So a buddy of mine lived in Huntington Beach, said, hey, come on back to Huntington. You know, it's Surf City, USA, unlimited waves, lots of great looking people, lots of fun. Come on now, 20 years later, I'm still there because truly Huntington Beach is like heaven on earth. If you haven't been, come on down. We'd love to have you there. But, but the point is this. The point is, is that in this time, I also became an investment advisor. I'm a certified financial planner. My goal is to help all of you retire. Make sure you keep your money, pay as little as you can in taxes, raise your kids, purchase your home, pay off your house, retire here, see your kids off to great schools, and have a comfortable life. That all sounds pretty good, right? Yes. Right, right? Yes. I've done it for over 20 years and I own the company. Now, during this time when I was kind of making my way and surfing and having a good time, making some money for my clients, making a buck or two for myself, I, I started to notice some things. First, I noticed my parents left. They built their home on the coast, but it wasn't in Carmel, right? Because they couldn't afford that. So what did they do? They had to go to the Southern Oregon coast. They built their home on the coast up there. It's not a strap, a nice little home, but they had to go to Oregon to do it because property was too expensive here because we can't build homes because they have all the fees we got and the regulations and jacking up the, the price of homes here, right? Because we don't have enough supply for all the people who want homes. So my parents left. And what about my brother? I got one brother, he worked for Raytheon, Raytheon Missile Systems. Those jobs, used to be in El Segundo, California. Not anymore. Now they're in Tucson, Arizona, so that's where my brother lives. My best friend took his business to Texas. He doubled the size of his business, doubled the size of his house, and now he doesn't pay a dime in state taxes. My clients that started out in California are now in over 20 states around the country because their jobs left, their companies left, and you know what? Then they left too. Raise your hand once more. Who has seen anyone leave California that you know? Right? Everybody. Keep your hand raised if you want to see them come back. Keep your hand raised if you want to live here and stay here and watch your kids grow up here, right? This is what we all want and this is why this state is worth taking back. That's why in 2012 I ran for office. I was a total unknown. Nobody knew me. I, I helped out a couple of politicians, but that was it. I never held elected office before. I was the underdog. The Sacramento Bee had me at a 20% chance to win two days before the election. I was running against a guy who had a political background. He was a small town mayor. He had almost every single endorsement up and down the state. Spent two or three times the amount of money I spent. But you know what? This guy was really foolish because there was a little piece of paper he refused to sign. It was called the No New Taxes Pledge. You see, he was one of these establishment rhino types that thought, I don't want to tie my hands.